M0FXB, welcome back to my videos on the DM1701. Today we're using the original software. I do like to switch between the two. I'm just going to close all these down and show you how it works. So we've downloaded the driver, USB driver. We've got the device connected to our PC via the, the cable. Make sure you get yourself a cable. And so let's just go to program and then we're going to go read data. Once you've downloaded the driver, I don't think you even need to look at your, your ports. It just works out of the box. So that's red. Uh, I know mine is like a brown and white sort of color, or brown and cream color. There it is coming back on. So go to the first thing is basic information. Tells you about the radio. So DM1701. We're running firmware version actually 1.05 or another way is to look at it as 2.03 MCU and apparently it can hold 120,000 contacts but we'll test that future so then you've got your basic underneath you've got general settings and over to the right let's make sure you can see that because I know my radio is right there in the way move this over a bit so you can see more okay that's better. So if you look on the right hand side, we've got call sign DMR number, which is the most important thing. I don't think I've changed anything else. Then we'll go down here. See where it says zone. The important one really is the, the channels and the contacts. So let's do channels first. So here where it says channel information, double click that and it will open up channels that you can create. So if we show you my hotspot. So down here, we've already named it hotspot. Double click. And this is where you can start changing parameters. So we've got the name, the receive and the transmit frequency where on a hotspot it's the same, tends to be the same. You can get dual hotspot. Then you've got the contact that you want it to talk to, which is worldwide. I'll show you that in a minute. Then color code one, slot two. You'll find the information required for that on your, uh, if you just Google the repeater, you're going to join unless you've made your own hotspot. So you can select digital and analog. This is the digital one. So let's go to a channel, a different channel that's already analog. So if we go to GB3BC. So you would put your name here, then you select the receive. So that's the frequency that you're listening on. Remember on a repeater, you have to transmit. There's no shift, there's no minus and plus when doing it this way. So you just, you have to work it out. So basically 145.15000, is what they call the input frequency. It will all be on the repeater's website. And then choose your power. And the timeout is how long you can speak for. You know, so choose that. Powers here. If it's an analog one, you're going to need to put in any tones. So down here, just put your slider down. Look, 94.8, just on transmit. On receive, I put none. And that's it. That channel's done. But what you could do then, you do need to put channels into zones. You're never going to find them. So up here, look for the word zone. And if it isn't open like this, double click it and it opens up. You can create new zones by going right click and add. But we're not going to do that because we've already got them here. So we go to say my channels zone. You've got the A band on the left and the, and the B band on the right. The channel underneath the word where it says available channels is all the channels you've been creating. So anything you've created down here in this long stretch, yeah? will always be here on and there's two lots because it's a dual band radio and don't forget for 40 pound you get all this and then you can decide which channels you want to appear in the a band and the b band it actually says channel member b channel member a so if i choose one of these say b c and i want to put it in the a section i hit add and there and if you want to remove one you select it and hit delete and that's how you do it like you've got all these channels here that i could use that i'm not going to use um, so we've got our hotspot there on the A and that. So once you've done that, you, the contact is so important. I'll tell you why. Go to digital contacts here. You get a new window open. Now these are basically your talk groups that when you transmit that you're going to talk to. So I've put down that worldwide is 91. Yeah. So what if I select that in my channel and I'll show you that. It will, when you transmit, it will go to that talk group. And it's very important. So we've got 2350 here, 2351. Obviously, there's thousands of talk groups, yeah? And including things like disconnect and connect, which I think is 4,000. And they've got a load more here, individual users that I think uh, my friend added. 
So if we go back to a digital channel, so go to channel information here, go to my hotspot. I've told it to talk to, yeah, worldwide. But if you drop down here where it says channel name, let's make sure you can see that actually. So I know that um, my radio gets in the way. That's better. Right, so on the right, look, worldwide, all the different contacts that you decide. I don't really do group lists, it's just you, but you can group channels together. Uh, color code one slot two that you find. So that's going to, when you transmit, talk on worldwide. But if I changed it now, a really good one to create digital contact, we double click it, is nine. Contact nine, look, group nine. That's a really good one because you can normally use manual dial with that. I don't know if this radio does manual dial, but you can normally do that. So let's say we just want to copy another channel. So we'll go here. If we go to my hotspot, see if I can copy it. We'll go right click copy. Then we'll go to the one that I'm not using. Right click paste. So then all the information hopefully will be in there. All we've got to do is just rename it. So we'll call it Hot Spot 9. Everything's there, but we can change the contact to let's choose number 9. Slider here. Let's say uh, contact number 9. And there's a difference between a private contact and a group contact. So you want to make sure you're choosing a group one. If you go back to digital, open up all these windows, populate. We just minimize that one, that one. We're just looking for the digital one. All right, down here at the bottom, look, you've got little tabs. Not that one. Let's minimize. So there is their digital, okay. And we just need to make sure that on the number nine, it says group core, not private. So these two should say group, these two, because these are private. These are group. When you're a group, everyone can chat. When it's private, it's one to one. So you can save as you go. Yeah, and you just go, or you go file, save as for a new file. So go back to where was I? The one I just created, which was the copy nine, hotspot nine. So contact nine group yeah and we can actually put that on a different slot why would you do it on a different slot it means i can actually listen to two at the same time but they let me think now i can use two but you would need to have two radios to hear two at the same time but it means whilst one's talking i can key the radio and it will use the other half of the channel because repeater slots are effectively cutting the channel in half and you've got other settings there auto scan so i think that's enough for now and then if you go to general settings there's one here for buttons, actually. Button definition. You can tell your buttons what to do. Look, a lot of them haven't even been assigned here. Side button through. I'm just going to choose some at random. And not box. Scan on off. Might as well do that. Right key. P1. Now you can slide down and just choose stuff. Switch up down screen. Go down. Normally zone up and down is normally quite a good one. I'm just going to choose right key, whatever. And power select. There's another one unassigned here. Yeah, there's a zone one at the top. Box on off. Why not? A eh? zone select, which I would say is quite an important one. And then look, long press duration. So how long you want it to? How long you have to press the long one? I'm gonna. Oops, my God. It was on zero, and now it's on thousands. Now let's just uh, delete it and put, I'll leave it at zero. So we're going to go file, write data to radio, click OK. Now we didn't put that talk group nine into a zone. So that's, um, you want to remember to do that. Otherwise you're not going to be able to find your channels, but I'll do that in a minute. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching my channel. I'll plug in my hotspot actually and just see if it hears it when I select it in a sec. And I fast forward if this is a bit boring. Now, I, you know, the GD77 way of using this radio is different, although fundamentally, fundamentally, DMR is the same 
on any radio if you ask me it's just in a different place but you're you're using channels or frequencies color codes which is like ctcss slots which is cutting the channel in half um, and contacts which is the talk group you're going to talk in fundamentally they're all the same so that's written fine um, I've plugged in so if I just go menu go to zone zone list go to hotspot on it should go to that now and if someone talks they are someone talking now actually you're not going to hear it because I plugged in the um, cable uh, I will unplug it let me just quickly no, that's fine. I'll unplug it. And so you can see you're not getting the contact yeah. yet. No, we do need to load contacts. So I don't know if I'm going to do it in this video. But we'll just go program, write contacts. We need the file, you see. You can't just import something because we haven't got it yet. So let me see if I can find a file. So you would normally go here and CS, use a CSV and you would hit that, let's turn that down they're talking about Droidstar, yeah I've been making some videos on that um, so I don't save there you go, that's that but really I need to get one that's a bit shorter, possibly that's interesting, they're actually talking about me just said my channel name, funny um, and, and I'm very proud of that as well, by the way. So you've got the contacts here for Alance. Um, so I think I do need to make a separate video because with the Alance, you can download the CSV contacts, but you can sort of pick and choose them and keep them under the 120,000 that were allowed. I'll put the link in for this as well. And when I've, I'll, I'll just show you just briefly how you load them. So you click, as you just saw, just cancel that again. I'm just going to go program uh let's get it right right contacts then you just open the file so when you go import you select the file surprise i've got none here at all from the past well there's an old one there i'll select it see what it does it might be the wrong type of file oh shed for successful um oh yeah we need to plug our cable back in <laughs> Remember, we unplugged it. Let's find it. I'd be surprised if it works, but you never know. It might get some of them in there. So, just plug that back in. Um, okay, keep trying. Uh, where is it? Go back to writing contacts. Program. Right, contacts. So you do the import again. And just a random file that happened to be on my computer. User. And last time it did say import successful. There you go. And then we're going to go right. And sometimes this can take ages, but it's saying, oh no, it's saying an error, but yeah, I'm not surprised. Thanks so much for watching my YouTube channel. Bye for now. 7-3. All the best. Learning about the DM-1701.